welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the Back to the Bunker book tag. Now this book tag was created by Kit over at Kit's World. I'll link his original video down below. This book tag was created in honor of um, not pretending like the virus is over in 2021, which I'm totally, totally agree with. Let's just stay in for a little bit longer, okay? Okay, sorry. So if you like to see me looking down, it's because I have my phone right here with all the questions. So the first question is, which book will lift your spirits up when world events are beating you down? Kit, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to go with Harry Potter on this one. So here's the thing. I feel kind of guilty about liking Harry Potter just because of the author. Um, but I also have like a really strong connection with it because of childhood events. Um, and just because I, you know, read it at a specific time in my life where it was very needed, etc. So I'm going to say Harry Potter, but actually, now that I think about it the most, I think that what I would love to read, like, now, because my, look, I'm a Gemini, my answers all change every five minutes, okay? Um, just kidding, I'm a Gemini Taurus Cuspy, and no one talks about Cuspians, but anyway. So I'm going to say, like, for real, I would... One book from my childhood that I, or like a series of books from my childhood that I think will always like stay with me and that I will always love reading are the Asterix and Obelix comic books. I loved them so much. And you know what? You know what? No, wrong answer. The Smurf. The Smurf comic books. I read those. And okay, my, I'm giving like 10 answers right now. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But those books make me so happy, y'all, 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 so much. And the Judy B. Jones, oh my god, I give four answers. Okay, anyway. Let's move on to the next question before I give you a list. <laughs> question two Which book gives useful survival tips for getting through these tough times? Okay, so The Body Keeps the Score by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. This is a um, medical like psychological medical book that is like somewhat self-help adjacent the premise of this book is that Dr. Bessel van der Kolk is a I can't remember if he's a psychologist or psychiatrist but he talks about his lifelong studies of PTSD especially with children and it's very helpful um he does the reason I say self-help adjacent is because he does give more practical, you know, like everyday tips for people, like stuff you can actually do beyond the like medical aspect of everything. And I feel like, you know, during these trying times, like everyone's mind is like getting really messed up because obviously your life is forced to change. And I think that this book would be very helpful for a lot of people to, you know, help you root you down, um, find yourself again. And yeah, the next question number three is, which book reminds you of what it means to be a good human being? Okay. Um, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, um, because I just feel like it's a very wholesome book. It's very, um, it has a like a beautiful morale, like the story is beautiful. The metaphor of the mockingbird is so like, like, vivid and like, obvious. I don't know. The next question, question number four, which book shows you how things would be if done right? Okay, now Kit skipped this question. Rude! Um, for this question, I picked The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Fun fact, in the fifth grade, I was we had a, we were doing the play The Little Prince. I was Saint-Exupéry in the first scene, and then I was a flower later on because the little prince is kind of like if you don't know the premise of the story it's the story of the little prince who is a child prince who well like he's a child really who goes to different planets and on each planet there's a different you know universe it's a very small you know it's like just one scene type thing and it's very like it's a child's children's book it's beautifully done and each planet he encounters a different situation basically that is representative of different societal situations and because they're lived through a child's perception and because it's a kid's book they are very infantilized they are very whimsical and 
simplified and but they're absolutely beautifully done and obviously the reason I said why these could be if they're done right is that because they're seen through a children's eyes it's a very like a world view from a children's eyes where it's just like you know why can't this be perfect like why can't we all just get along type thing why can't this be this way and it's just like it's a classic for a reason y'all okay all right question number five which book has the happiest ending you can think of so <laughs> I really thought I was gonna struggle to find a book for this one and I if I had done this tag a month ago I would not have an answer for this question because trust me when I tell you I do not like happy endings um not that I'm a crappy person or anything it's just that <laughs> when I read a book and there's a happy ending in my brain I'm just like oh, that's too like easy like really I want my mind to be like <laughs> and then <laughs> luckily for everyone last month in December I think it was The Secret Garden by Frank Fran <laughs> Francis Hodgson Burnett happy ending because everyone's happy at the end and that constitutes as a happy ending question number six which book celebrates humanity in the most beautiful or enlightening way this was kind of a hard one honestly um I picked the Banquet by Plato. The reason being is that I think humanity is at its most beautiful when it, you know when people just discuss things and share ideas and it's like everyone's bouncing off of each other and we can just be in this state of mind where we can create thoughts, ideas, dialogues, and I just the Banquet to me was the perfect thing. If you don't know, The Banquet is a philosophy book by Plato, a philosopher who basically the premise is that many, like several philosophers get together together for dinner and share ideas. Now, the particularity is that the p characters that are written by Plato are actual philosophers. So in his book, it's different philosophers discussing different ideas. The philosopher's viewpoints in the book are their actual viewpoints in real life. So it's like, it's basically like just a bunch of philosophers discussing stuff. And I just think that's absolutely beautiful when, and just, I just, it floors me honestly when I read this book that which it was written in, in ancient Greece. I can't remember exactly when, but they're just discussing these incredibly modern ideas to me. And it's just like, I love it when people can bounce their ideas off of each other. And I think that's when we're at our best, when we can really be in this state of mind where we can create and grow and just, I'm eating my hair right now. <laughs> I'm not at my best right now, y'all. <laughs> oh! look at my copy of The Banquet. There's a naked dude on it. Small penis, but you know. Oh, it was civilized back then to have a small penis, don't you know? Fun fact. Question number seven. Which book is a shining light in the darkness? As I Crossed a Bridge of Dreams by Lady Sarashina. This book is a Japanese classic. This is an 11th century account of a voyage. It's this lady, Lady Sarashina. Um, obviously, because it was so long ago, we don't have that much context on exactly who she was um, in society. However, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Now, I'm not f super familiar with Japanese culture, let alone 11th century, but I'm gonna say that if she had enough paper, ink, and if she was literate, at the time then she was probably pretty high up. Um, so basically this Lady Sarashina is going on a trip from, I can't remember off the top of my head which city to which city, but they're going on a trip and this is her detailing the trip and it is gorgeous. I mean when I read this, like I said earlier for The Secret Garden, you know when you're reading something and your mind is just like picturing it so vividly like you can see it happening like as you're reading it you know and I just felt when I was reading this like this scroll like of 
Japanese paintings was just unfolding before my eyes. It is wonderfully written. I cannot recommend this book enough. And like how many personal accounts do you have from the 11th century? You know what I mean? This, oh my goodness, I'm so glad I read it. I would recommend it to everyone. I, I just, what a dream it was to read this book. Like seriously, it's such a light in the darkness and no one talks about it. Oh my gosh. Why are you having, why don't people, And finally, last question is, which book would you have everybody read? Okay, so, the dictionary. <laughs> I need everyone to read the dictionary. Don't lie to me. I know you and me can count five people right now that have never read a dictionary and that need it in their life right now. Right now. I mean, when I tell you my biggest pet peeve, oh my god, no, don't do that. The dictionary. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tag three people, um, but it's an open tag for everyone again. I'm going to tag Lady Jane Books. I love her videos. Oh my gosh. And her hair. I told her, but I have to say it. I'm going to tag Books Yada Yada, and I'm going to tag This Is Not A Booktube. And actually, number four, I'm going to tag Books of Blood as well, because I'm really curious what y'all's answers are going to be. Um, okay, let's leave it at that. You Like this video if you did, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!